This is grade A, 100% pure Colombian cocaine, ladies and gentlemen, disco shit. Pure as the driven snow. <laughs> you have officially been served, Mr. Tarantino. Let's make this happen. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 actors we'd love to see in Quentin Tarantino movies. See, if you get on that radio, you're gonna find out that we're wanted in two states, and probably considered armed and dangerous, at least I am, and, and then our whole plan is just gonna be all shot to hell. For this list, we're looking at actors and actresses who, in our opinion, would be a perfect fit for a collaboration with Quentin Tarantino, given their existing filmographies. In 87, Huey released this. Four, their most accomplished album. I think their undisputed masterpiece is Hip to Be Square. However, we're only including actors who've never worked on full movies where Tarantino was the director. For relaxing times, make it Centauri time. Number 10, Marion Cotillard. J'aimais bien qu'on me regarde. J'aimais bien sentir que je séduisais. J'aimais bien sentir que je les excitais. If you're familiar with Christopher Nolan's 2010 film Inception, then you already know that Marion Cotillard is perfectly capable of stealing any scene with just a single glance. There's no use threatening him in a dream, right, Ma? That depends on what you're threatening. And she certainly has the necessary acting chops to take on just about anything, as she won the Best Actress Oscar for her role as French singer Edith Piaf. When you called me for my visit to the restaurant, me saying, we are two Français, only in New York, maybe we would have dinner together, Given Tarantino's directorial style, we think Cotillard would be a perfect choice for a woman out for vengeance, or perhaps a femme fatale that breaks hearts with her intellect and sex appeal. Come on, Chris. F me. You're dying too, I know you are. I just got married. Yeah. And? Number 9, Javier Bardem. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sure. He starred as a bloodthirsty psychopath in the Coen Brothers' No Country for Old Men. And he starred as a bloodthirsty psychopath in the James Bond film Skyfall. Let's see who ends up on top. So, what do you say, Quentin? Can you up the ante for Stone Cold villains? Of course. It had to be here. Even though Javier Bardem would make for the ultimate baddie, Perhaps he's better suited to play a completely original character for the next Tarantino classic. <laughs> After all, he's been there, done that when it comes to terrifying serial killers. It's time for a cinematic surprise from Mr. Bardem, and Tarantino could effectively capitalize on his talents. Is it reasonable of me to ask you if you'll both join me in my room? Oh, come on, I thought we'd settled that. Number eight, Jennifer Lawrence. I reckon y'all got this place about another week. That's my guess. A week? And there ain't nothing I can do? Nope. We know this woman can act, and she's obviously capable of carrying a successful franchise. So perhaps it's time for Jennifer Lawrence to show off her lighter side. Stop oh, what are you to us, Yes, right? I wanted huh? to hurt you, but how do you think that I feel all day when you leave me alone? All day and all I've ever wanted you to do is love me. Whether it's a spaghetti western parody or a road comedy, Lawrence has the natural charm to pull off some deadpan Tarantino humor, especially if she's playing a dangerous woman on the prowl. Oh my god. Come here. Come on. Get in the bed. She's arguably the best female actress out there right now, which is why there was talk of her taking on the role that ultimately went to Jennifer Jason Lee in The Hateful Eight. They call him the hangman. But just as Tarantino managed to stylize Uma Thurman without over-sexualizing her character in Kill Bill, he could do the same for Jennifer Lawrence in the future. There's always gonna be a part of me that's sloppy and dirty, but I like that with all the other parts of myself. Can you say the same about yourself, f***er? Can you forgive? Number seven, Denzel Washington. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. Landed right on top of us. Denzel made his feature debut over 10 years before Tarantino released his cult classic Reservoir Dogs. My heart's beating so fast, I'm about to have a heart attack. He would be the ideal choice to play a suit and tie lead, whether it's someone who's out to save the day or perhaps a maniacal anti-hero. When you kill someone on duty, they have to be a slave in the afterlife. Washington has the composure necessary to deliver extensive pseudo-intellectual Tarantino dialogue 
and with that penetrating stare of his, it could make any scene terrifying or potentially comedic. I'm gonna get that gun, and then I'm gonna get that money. And you ain't gonna do a damn thing, because you ain't gonna shoot no cop in the back, are you? Maybe both. That's what you get with Denzel Washington. So you are what you are in this world. That's either one or two things. Either you're somebody, or you're nobody. The two might have had a small behind-the-scenes beef due to Tarantino's uncredited script work on Crimson Tide. But now that that's water under the bridge, the time is now for this collaboration. In my humble opinion, in the nuclear world, the true enemy is war itself. Number six, Johnny Depp. Suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car. Gangster, pirate, cocaine kingpin, gangster. You gotta tell me that. What's the secret? This man has played a number of Tarantino-esque characters while putting his own unique spin on each role. Next time it's fucking loaded. And with Johnny Depp now in the other side of 50 stage of his career and still an A-lister, he's surely primed to give us yet another iconic movie performance under Tarantino's direction. There's no choice. I wouldn't dare go to sleep with you wandering around with a head full of acid and wanting to slice me up with that goddamn knife. <gasps> Way back when. Depp starred in the first A Nightmare on Elm Street. A young Tarantino was inspired by horror flicks, specifically Italian horror, so a collaboration only seems inevitable. We're not saying they need to remake a Clint Eastwood classic, but something of that ilk would be momentous. Get along, little doggies, get along, get along. Get along, little doggies, get along. Number five, Edward Norton. And this isn't something that's going on far away. This isn't something that's happening places we can't do anything about it. It's happening right here. In the late 90s, this American actor was the man with roles in Primal Fear, American History X, and of course, Fight Club. Tyler also worked sometimes as a banquet waiter at the luxurious Pressman Hotel. But let's be honest. Edward Norton hasn't been as busy in recent years, although he's still working with top-notch directors. We're gonna strip search every pretzel house, Waffelhut, beer garden, and especially every grand hotel from Augensburg to Zilchbrook. We've had enough of the clever supporting roles. We need to see this guy return as the number one draw. And with Tarantino being the exceptional writer that he is, a role specifically designed for Ed Norton would kill at the box office. What a f***ing waste. Can you believe that? She's really got him by the balls. It's not so bad, is it? Depends on the grip. We don't need him to wield a gun. We just need a psychological thriller starring Edward Norton with Tarantino guiding the action. And everything will naturally work itself out. In the basement, you're gonna find some bathtubs that have been used very recently to make large quantities of nitroglycerin. Number four, Nicolas Cage. Where are the band-aids? This is an ambulance, isn't it? You might call this one the wild card and we don't have to explain why. Not the beast! Ah! I love my eyes! My eyes! Just as Nicolas Cage has been known to overreach a little bit with his characters, Tarantino also pushes the limits when it comes to audience comfort. I'm not scared shitless. That's good, isn't it? How would you feel about it, Roy? Yeah. Together, these two men could make a cult classic, but it would have to be around 90 minutes in length because there's only so much Nicolas Cage that one can endure, regardless of the director. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Peter. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Peter. Q, R, S, T, U, V, Q, U, X, Y, Z! Huh? What this means is that Tarantino needs to pick a specific genre and allow Cage the creative freedom to do what he does best. And hey, Rob Zombie already teased at the possibilities by casting Nicolas Cage in his trailer segment of Grindhouse. And Nicolas Cage as Fu Manchu. This is my vision! <laughs> Number three, Woody Harrelson. Very innovative. Put it on shoulder. Let's go. We're gonna play follow the leader. Everybody's gonna follow me out of here. One be happy family. Here's a man with the ideal set of skills to play a dangerous yet hilarious supporting character for Quentin Tarantino. Gun, please. 
like you would ever use that thing. Don't kill me with my own gun! Woody Harrelson once starred as a Tarantino-conceived natural-born killer and delivered an unforgettable performance as a despicable drug dealer in Out of the Furnace, while outshining Christian Bale in the process. You got a problem with me? I got a problem with everybody. So he's proven his worth as the likable nemesis. It's only natural to envision him as the bad guy. Peace is for queers. And now you're gonna die. However, it'd be interesting to see what Tarantino could do with Woody to highlight his versatility as an actor, given his extensive history of outlandish roles. Look, Mr. Munster, you're not exactly the smartest guy I ever ran across. Oh, yeah? And who are you, Alfred Einstein? Number two, Tom Hardy. We are survivors. We control the fear. And without the fear, we are all as good as dead. Here at Watch Mojo, we've long admired the work of Tom Hardy, but after his performance as Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, no one cared who I was till I put on the mask. And Max Rokitansky in Mad Max Fury Road. Well, he's more than just one of our favorites. He's one of the most sought after names in movies today. Let's not stand on ceremony here. With a slick and stylish demeanor suitable for any Tarantino character, Hardy has also displayed his crazy side for us. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. If that's not enough, his fame would attract the casual moviegoer. What have I got to cheer up about? I'll be locked up on an 8x10 tomorrow night. His masculinity would please both the tough guy crowd and admiring females, while his talent has surely led Quentin Tarantino to contemplate a potential collaboration. Right, that's enough! He's had enough! Get him out of here! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I, uh, I was headed east, she, uh, west, and we, uh, took shelter in the back of the truck. It was full of undelivered packages. <laughs> what was her name? Beverly. Beverly Hills. That kind of been in front of them cheap shells on me again. I thought you were going to say the sun was in your eyes. That is to say, your eye. Not an offer from some uh, slick looking deputy who wore perfume. Man. Charlie Riggs? Right. They need somebody else on the strip was not Italian. You dig? Like Howard Hughes when he bought the Desert Inn. I noticed you looking at me before. Huh? I liked it. You should do it. You should do it, Roller Girl, because, because you know what? If you wanted to, you could do anything. Number one. Daniel Day-Lewis. When Daniel Day-Lewis commits to a role, everybody knows what to expect, and his performances are nothing short of astonishing. It's a sturdy profession. Day-Lewis can physically transform for any type of role, and his method acting approach ensures that each and every character stands the test of time as an original interpretation. So say it now, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Say it louder, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. Louder, Daniel, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. And can you imagine what would have happened had Day Lewis played Vincent Vega as he almost did? And you know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? With all due respect to Quentin Tarantino's filmography, Daniel Day Lewis may simply be too big to fit in with an ensemble cast. I don't give a tuppenny f about your moral conundrum, you meat-headed shit sack. What about a biopic? That would be a beautiful thing if one of the best filmmakers enlisted one of the finest actors of all time for two hours of cinematic art. Bailey, would you help us? Tell me. Reuten. Yeah, Reuten what? My own story. Do you agree with our list? Which actor would you like to see in a Quentin Tarantino movie? Has the whole world gone crazy! Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Mark and Zero! They're calling the cops, man. Put the piece away. Mark and Zero! For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.